Matter really seems like it's the future of smart home and internet of things tech. But what even is it? It's a bit of a complicated and under-supported mess right now. So let me do my best to explain what Matter is, why it's seen as the future, and why you might want it. At a base level, Matter is a way for different smart home devices to talk to each other. You want your smart lights to talk to your smart switches, or your smart plug socket to talk to home assistant so you could monitor your power usage, so you need something to let them all talk to each other. It's important to note here that Matter isn't actually a radio protocol like Zigbee or Z-Wave, it's a communication protocol that runs on top of other networks. Matter is kind of the language that the devices speak, and the underlying radio protocols are how they speak to each other. Matter is primarily designed to work over threat. No, not the recently released spyware from everyone's favourite robot man. No, the open source communication protocol that Google released, which started in 2014. Thread, much like Zigbee, uses the 802.15.4 standard to create a separate mesh network between devices. Thread actually uses 6LOWPAN, or IPv6 over low power wireless personal area networks. Catchy, I know. Basically, unlike Wi-Fi, which uses the hub and spoke model, you connect to a single access point and only to the access point, Thread uses a mesh network to set up where actually most of the devices will talk to each other and be able to relay messages. So even if your furthest away little sensor can't reach your hub, the message can still bounce across the various other devices you have in your network until it gets to the hub. Now that does mean that you do need a hub, or in this case a thread border router, but it means that you'll have a much more reliable, lower power and separate network for all of your smart home tech to connect to. Thread in particular is a little different from Zigbee, as Thread uses bog standard IPv6 to give addresses to each of the various devices that you connect to the network. That means that it's easier for thread devices to talk to regular IP uh, you know, based devices like your phone or other Wi-Fi connected tech. That's also why Matter prefers it. A lot of the products that you'll find are listed as Matter over Thread, which means that they do require a border router, but you will have great battery life, won't need to connect to your Wi-Fi network, and thanks to the mesh network, you should be able to place your devices basically all over your house and still have great connectivity. A number of existing smart home hubs have already been updated to support Thread and Matter, including the Samsung SmartThings Station, a load of Google's Nest Hubs, Wi-Fi routers, and the Nest Max Hub, and a couple of others as well. You can also use a dongle like this one with the appropriate firmware and use that with Home Assistant, which is actually what I'm going to be doing in the next video of this series, where I'm gonna try getting all of these devices connected to Home Assistant over, well, Matter over threads uh, and get that working. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that because I have a sneaking suspicion it's not going to be as simple as I would like it to be. The nice thing about Matter though is that because it's based on IPv6, it also works on Wi-Fi devices too, which via the Thread border router can happily talk to Thread devices and Wi-Fi Matter devices as well. Of course, Wi-Fi Matter devices can't connect to the mesh network and do have uh, lower efficiency, which does mean shorter battery life, but of course, having the ease of no separate hub required might be nice. You will still need a Matter controller though, which most smart hubs and home assistants can act as and do. I would argue that while the setup process for Matter over Wi-Fi devices might be a little easier because you're just connecting to your standard Wi-Fi network, I would much prefer Matter over Thread devices thanks to the efficiency, mesh networking, and actually the security benefit of not being directly connected to the internet. Espressive, the makers of the ESP32, have a great demonstration of what Matter can do. They set up a collection of the devices, one Thread network, one Wi-Fi network, and actually one over Zigbee 
as well. The thread connected display can control the Zigbee light, thanks to matter. Now, I believe that's not quite what you might call matter over Zigbee, more that their sort of Zigbee and matter bridge is doing the sort of conversion on the fly, but the fact that this is possible at all is what makes matter special. It isn't just another standard relevant XKCD here, but more like the glue that finally binds these competing standards together. Yes, devices that use thread are likely to be the sort of future connectivity standard over Zigbee, but the fact that, you know, with Matter, you can use devices from any standard and make them all work together is fantastic. As for the devices themselves, thanks to how new Matter is, they only launched their official V1 specification in, in October last year, so under 12 months ago, the number of devices that support Matter is somewhat slim. Hell, even if you include uh, the thread-enabled devices as well, you still only get a total of 47 listed on OpenThread's own website. Matter V1 only supports things like lighting products, door locks, thermostats, HVAC controls, blinds, and home security sensors. Things like motion, temperature, and environmental sensors will be supported soon, but not quite yet. Software support is also pretty new. Even on Google's border routers or Samsung's SmartThings station, I mean, for example, Philips Hue's line will support Matter, but it currently does it. Home Assistant's Matter integration is still in beta, which kind of really tells you what sort of state all this is in right now. It's new, but the number of devices that support Matter in one form or another is slowly growing. Matter-SmartHome.de has a list of devices, and even handily lists if they use Thread or Wi-Fi, and if they're available, announced, or just outright cancelled already, as some of them apparently are. I'll link to all of that in the description down below for you if you want to check it out. If you want to get in on the Matter device hype train this early, what you'll be looking for here is listings that show the Matter logo, and ideally the Threads or Thread logo as well. The listing should also say something like Matter over Thread. Most Amazon listings seem to be pretty good for that. You will also need something to act as a Matter controller, whether that is a fully packaged system that runs the Thread border router as well, like a Samsung SmartThings station or something more DIY like Home Assistant and a Thread dongle with the correct firmware. Do bear that in mind. Uh, also, even the Matter over Wi-Fi devices, I believe, will still need a Matter controller somewhere on your network, so again, keep that in mind too. Like I said, this is still in its early stages, but I thought this was a good sort of introduction to what Matter is and how it relates to threads and Wi-Fi, and in the next video, I'm going to actually be setting this stuff up with Home Assistant and seeing how that goes. Like I said, if you're interested in watching that video, then do hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Also, if you want to see the rest of my smart home series, including all the stuff I've done with Home Assistant and with Zigbee, check out that playlist on the end cards when they pop up in a second. If you want to support the channel, you can do so through YouTube, Patreon, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or a load of other designs that I've made myself. Of course, if you want to pick up any Matter or Threads devices, there'll be some Amazon affiliate links in the description that you can check out that don't cost you anything extra, but do support me when you use them. And there's also a load of other links in the description, including stuff like my open source response time and latency testing tools. Uh, that's osrtt.com, again, linked in the description. And otherwise, that's kind of it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments down below. We'll see you all in the next video.